face, you can make that argument. Gone are the glasses. Her clothes are different. They certainly have tried to give her a different look for this jury. Yeah, uh, look like a mom, you know, look like a grieving wife, something other than the very ramrod, stiff uh, witness that she was during the first trial. All right, our time right now, we're coming up on about 20 minutes before 3 o'clock, and the judge has said it will go to a reasonable hour. And he then said, I'm not going to tell you what that reasonable hour is, but we'll have you out of here at a reasonable hour. So that may be defined by 4.30, by 5 o'clock, somewhere through there. I think the judge, and he's done this in other cases, it's going to be defined by the witnesses. He's not going to stop a witness in mid-sentence and send him home exactly at 5 o'clock. If a witness finishes the direct testimony early, he may send him home a little early or may keep him a little late. So the next break will probably come in another hour or so? That sounds reasonable. That seems to be what he's doing now. All right, and a reminder, we have coverage for you coming up at 6 and 7 o'clock on 11 Alive, then at 10 o'clock on WATL, my uh, ATL TV on Channel 36. That's the rundown at 10 and then 11 Alive at 11 p.m. We are streaming this trial through its uh, completion, so we are expecting that to be about three weeks on our, on our two different platforms, that is 11alive.com and our uh, subcarrier station, which is 11.2. It is there that you can check in with this trial as we are covering it uh, uh, as it begins at 9 a.m. promptly, as uh, Judge Adams has said, and we will carry it to uh, the final gavel, uh, and that is uh, going to be right here. So let's go back into the courtroom. we we'll get ready for Judge Adams to come out. We should be just moments away from his reappearance. Good afternoon again. You may be seated. All right, Kelly, we're back on the record. Mr. Clegg, you may cross the if you wish. I do, in fact, wish, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Ms. Oliveira, my name is Tom Clegg. I am a lawyer here in Decatur, and I have a few questions for you, okay? <laughs> if you could speak up into the microphone so we can all hear you, okay? Yes. Um, what day of the week was it always happened? It must have been either towards the end of the week, Wednesday or Thursday. Okay. Is it fair to say, based on your answer, you do not have a specific recollection of what day of the week it was? I don't recall the specific day now, but I know it was towards the end of the week. Okay. And you just used the phraseology, must have been towards the end of the week. Why did you say must have been towards the end of the week? We didn't provide DJ service in the beginning of the week, like a Monday or Tuesday or a Wednesday. It must have been a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Now, do you recall what these individuals consumed while they were at the restaurant? No, sir. Okay. Um, they came to the bar, is that correct? They did. Okay. Now, on the receipt which has been admitted into evidence, it says table and then says dinner couple. Yes, sir. Okay. Did they have dinner? No. Um, did they sit at the table? No, they did not. Okay. So... And uh, the bill was for $20.35 worth of merchandise, correct? Correct. Right. You have absolutely no recollection whether they ate anything or not, correct? Sir, at the time that they came in, dinner was not available, and we did not serve dinner at that time. And the tables are not available on the dance floor. 
So if I'm understanding correctly, they came into the bar or the establishment late enough in the evening where they couldn't get dinner, right? Right. And they came into the establishment late enough where they could not get a table, correct? The tables were pushed out of the way so that the bar lounge was a dance environment at the evening, in the evening. And was that done to accommodate the crowd that you expected on the dance floor? That's correct. So this would have been an evening where you were anticipating a crowd to show up and be on the dance floor, right? Okay. In light of the fact that dinner was not available, why is it described on the ticket as a dinner couple? That was just the generic coding of the computer. I, I don't know their setup or who set up the computer, but that's just the way it was indicated. Did you make that entry yourself that they were a dinner couple? No, sir. No, I did not. Do you have any idea how that entry got onto that particular ticket that they were, in fact, a dinner couple? I believe all receipts stated dinner couples as a generic table. It's not indicated table number or bar. That wasn't the method that they used. It was just generic receipt input. Is it your understanding that pretty much everyone who comes in, if they don't come by themselves, is a dinner couple? No, sir. Uh, for purposes of your coding system? I don't know how management chose to describe dinner couple or singles, okay. um, but that was just what the receipt states. I had no entry in that. Is it fair to say that you would have been the only person who would have made any sort of computer entry in regards to this particular couple? That evening, yes. No one else in the bar was fulfilling the function that particular evening, correct? Yeah. And even though the tables had been cleared out to allow people to dance, virtually no one else was in the bar at all, correct? Correct. Yeah. You have, of course, no recollection of what day of the week it was when these folks walked into the bar, right? No, yeah, sir. Sure. What was the actual day? And don't look at the receipt that they came in. I don't know. Sometime in October. I'm sorry? Sometime towards uh, in October towards the end of the month. Okay, so it was in October, right? Yes, sir. And you guys at the bar were planning a big Halloween blowout, right? Yes. And that was something you conveyed to the male who you recall, correct? Yes, he asked what events were going to take place and how often we were opened, and I provided him the information as to the Halloween party. Okay, so the male, this is the male you're having this conversation with, right? Yes. He is interested in knowing the schedule of the bar in the near future, right? Yes, because he's mentioning to her that we should return. I'm sorry, speak up. The three of us were in conversation at the bar when he, the male, is approaching me and asking me what's the next event. He's also directing the question not just at myself, but at the defendant. Based on that question, did you get the impression that this couple was from the Greenville area? No. Um, you did tell him about the Halloween event, right? I did. Was it going to be a costume party? It was. Did the individual, did either of the individuals, the male or the female, indicate that they might come back and check out the costume party? The male said that we should return, is were his comments to her. We should return? Yes. And again, this would have been in Greenville, South Carolina. That is correct. Correct? Now, you said there was virtually nobody else in the bar that particular evening. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And now there are other people working there, I guess, right? Myself and the DJ. There is no security? No, sir. Was there a surveillance system inside the restaurant? There, there might have been. I'm not sure if it was working. You don't know one way or the other, correct? I was not responsible for surveillance of the restaurant. No. Okay. Let me make sure I understand correctly. You believe that there was a system in place. There was. Let me finish the question. But you are not sure whether it was actually functioning on that evening. Is that correct? Okay. There was a monitor in the room for the employees that you can see the activity in the front of the restaurant. I'm not sure if it was recording that evening. I don't know how management or the owners of the restaurant had it set up. When did you actually leave this particular restaurant? I'm sorry? When did you stop working at this restaurant? I returned to Miami in um, the end of October, beginning of November. Of 2010? Yes, sir. Can you tell us the precise date that you moved back to Miami? November 1st. November what? 1st. 1st. So you were not around at that location for an extended period of time 
after this particular incident, correct? No. How many days was it between this particular incident where you made these observations and when you moved back to Miami? Ten days. Ten, Ten days. days. It's interesting, ma'am. You just said you didn't know the specific date when they came in, um, but now you're saying it was 10 days. According to the receipt, sir, it was the 21st indicated on the receipt, and I know I was in Miami on November 1st. So your testimony is not based on your recollection, but simply I looking do at recall, the state. Is that correct, ma'am? No, I remember when I moved back to Miami, sir. Okay. Um, how long did you work at this bar? A few months. Were there nights when it was crowded? Yes, it was. Were there nights when people danced? Yes. Were there nights when people danced energetically? Yes, sir. Were there nights when people did salsa dancing? Yes. Were there nights when people attempted to twirl each other around? As, yes. Okay. This is a fairly common practice at the establishment, correct? Yes, and it had its peak season. Speak into the microphone. It had its peak seasons. Meaning, especially if there was a baseball game down the street, we could expect the restaurant to be crowded because we would have the spill from the stadium over to the restaurant. When it was cold, there wasn't a large crowd. If it was raining, there wasn't a large crowd. So it depended on the evening. And Greenville is funny about crowds. It's not a steady customer base. Was it cold that evening? I, it was cool. I remember that. Or did it rain in that evening? I don't remember that. Now, do you remember what these individuals were wearing? What sort of car, what sort of outfit they had on? I remember that the gentleman was wearing a yellow polo shirt and glasses with khaki pants, and she was wearing a jean jacket and glasses, and her hair was halfway pulled up. Now, you've looked at the ticket, and you see that these, the, your recollection of these individuals were apparently in that bar on October 21st. When is the next day the next date, excuse me, that you tried to recollect what happened on that particular day. I'm sorry? Okay. When is it that at some point in the future you sat down and thought, hmm, what was going on on October 21st of 2010 in that bar? The date doesn't stick out, sir, but the couple did. Okay. When is it when you were asked about the couple? Uh, several months later. Define so several months. I can't give you a specific month. Um, I know I was phoned asking if I had remembered this particular couple. Yeah. So you were asked at some point in the future, several months after the fact, if you remembered this particular couple. Yes. Were you shown a picture of the couple? Yes. Was that before, were you able to remember this particular couple before you were shown a picture? Or did you remember them prior to being shown a picture? The, the first phone call that I had received asked if I was working at Pulse Lounge during this time. I indicated yes. The next um, phone call was, if we can show you a picture, would you be able maybe to describe a customer, or not describe, excuse me, um, maybe remember if a particular customer had been in the bar. When I was shown the picture, they stood out immediately. Okay. And you remembered that, did you remember them instantaneously? Yes, sir. Would that have been in March of 2011? Possibly, yes. Okay. Do you remember exchanging a series of emails with a gentleman by the name of David Rosenthal? Yes. Okay. Do you remember having had an opportunity? Uh, did you read what he had to say? And in turn, did you respond to what he had to say? I know I responded to the email. I don't know what I indicated. I don't remember. Do you have Did you know David Rosenthal to be? I, I didn't know who he was. He had. Well, at some point, did you find out who he worked for? Yes. And was that for the district attorney's office in DeKalb County? Yes. And did you communicate back and forth with him over a short period of time? Uh, yes. Did you, at some point, tell them, tell him that you remembered this couple very well? 
Yes. And in your first communication with him, did you say anything at all about their kissing? I remember indicating that they had kissed when I was on the phone with him. I'm sorry, say that again. I had received an email with the pictures. I don't know if I emailed what took place that night. I do remember standing outside of my employer at the time on the phone with Mr. Rosenthal indicating what happened that night and that they had kissed, yes. So the first time you would have communicated via email with Mr. Rosenthal, you believe that you specifically related to him that they had kissed, right? I, I don't remember what I wrote, sir. Okay. Let me show you, may I approach you? You may. Let me show you what has been marked as uh, defendant's exhibit number two and ask you to direct your attention to the bottom of the page. Just read that to yourself, ma'am. <clears throat> Let me know when you have finished reading that particular email. Uh -huh. Okay. Does that refresh your memory as to the email communication that you first had with Mr. Rosenthal describing your recollection of these individuals? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you, in your first email communication to Mr. Rosenthal, ever say anything about the couple having kissed? Specifically kissing, no, sir. Okay, so you did not, is that correct? No, but as I indicated here, he was very touchy and all over her. I mean, that could have been me indicating there he was all over her. Okay. He was all over her, right? Yes. You also communicated to the district attorney's office that she was not as into him as he was into her, correct? That's correct. What is it that led you to draw that conclusion? Their demeanor. Their demeanor. Yes. You mean their demeanor on the dance floor when Mr. James was describing their various moves? Did you look at those moves and say, gosh, she's not into him? He was very expressive and he was interacting with me. She was not as verbal as he was, but they seemed to be having a good time. Uh, we were three people in the bar and the DJ was very far off. So they were talking to me throughout okay. their, their... So your, inter your opinion that she was not into him as much as he was into her was based on the conversations you had with him? No, sir, based on his body language. Okay. And tell us about her body language that led you to conclude that she was not as into him as he was into her. In the beginning of the evening, she was upset. And towards the end, she was much more affectionate. She did display affection towards him, not as much as he did, but she did display affection towards him. Okay, so just to make sure I understand your testimony, first in the beginning of the evening she was upset, right? Yes, sir. What, did, what is it that would cause you to think, wow, she's upset? What behavior did she do, engage in? So she she appeared to be upset and asked where the restroom was, and he indicated no, I don't, I'm not asking you what he said. I'm asking you what manifestations or what actions... Her facial say? expression and his confirmation that apparently something was bothering her. Her expression. What was her expression? It was upset. Uh, tell us how, what that looks like. An upset face. I don't, I don't know that she was upset. Well, Mr. Mr. James has demonstrated the dance move for us. So what I want you to do right now, for the benefit of these ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is demonstrate that look that led you to conclude that she was upset. She seemed to throw her things around. She had an, not an angry face. She wasn't angry. She was just upset about something. She was bothered. Um, was she crying? I don't remember her crying, um, but I do remember she was upset. When you say you don't remember her crying, does that mean she was not crying? Or she may have been or may I don't not know. have been? Sir, she was wearing glasses, so if she was crying or she was teary-eyed, I don't remember. I, or I didn't notice that. Did you notice anything else about her body language that led you to conclude that she was upset? Yes. Tell us about that. She was shaking her hands and kind of put her phone on the bar. Or, yeah, her phone on the bar. Now, did you overhear any of her actual phone conversation? No. Okay. And how long did she shake her hands for? Two seconds. How long? Two seconds. Two seconds, okay. Two seconds, the drink is there, and she's like, 
you know, upset and went for her drink and kind of brushed it off. And <coughs> Did she have one drink or two? I don't remember how many drinks. There. And was it an alcoholic drink? It was an alcoholic drink. Was it a beer as opposed to a glass of wine as opposed to a mixed drink? It was probably a mixed drink. Probably a mixed drink. You are here in a court of law, ma'am. You are testifying under oath, and you use the word probably. Do you know what she had to drink? Precisely no, sir. Do you know that it was a mixed drink? Yes. Why did you use the word probably? Because I don't really recall the exact drink she had. Okay. Now you were, despite the fact, you're sitting at the bar with these folks, right? Yes, sir. You're the one who serves these folks, right? Yes. And when they get out on the dance floor, you're watching them like a hawk, right? Uh, they were very entertaining, and we're the only ones there. <laughs> you don't miss a beat, right? Not when we're three people in a bar, sir. Okay. But at the same time, you are unaware of what they're drinking, and anything else, right? This was some time ago. I don't really recall the drink, no. Okay, it was some time ago, and I don't really recall. And again, this happened, mm -hmm. allegedly, on October 21st, right? Yes, sir. You don't have a specific recollection of that date, do you? No. You don't have a specific recollection of the date that you actually talked to the investigator from the DA's office, right? No, sir. When you talked to the investigator from the DA's office, it would have been some time ago, right? Yes, sir. And yet you have a very specific recollection as you sit here today on the witness stand and describe the way they danced, right? Yes, sir. You have a specific recollection of the sequence of the dances they engaged in, right? Yes, sir. And you have a specific recollection of the kind of kisses they exchanged. Yes, sir. Did you testify in the trial on Henny Newman? Yes, I did. Did you describe the nature of the kisses as pop kisses? Yes, sir. What's a pop kiss? When you press your mouth against someone else. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Man. When you press your mouth against someone else, there was no tongue involved. Okay, so it's just a kind of thing? Not a peck, sir, but more a long press on the lips. That's a pop kiss. Where I come from, that is a pop okay. kiss. <laughs> and, okay, and that's from Miami, right? Yes, sir. Okay, and you described it as a pop kiss. Again, in the initial conversation you had with... Uh, Mr. Rosenthal, over the internet, you described no kiss at all, right? I'm sorry? You described no kiss at all in your original communication with Mr. Rosenthal, right? But in my second communication, I do. Okay. And that was after he sent you a picture, right? Yes, sir. You ever send you a photo lineup? I uh, don't know. You know what a photo lineup is? I do. Okay, it's a group of pictures which ask you whether you can recognize anybody, oh, right? No, sir. Let me ask you this. Um, how long were these folks in the bar? About an hour, an hour and a half. Okay. And that is the only time you ever saw them in your whole life, right? Yes, sir. And as a, when, when you went back to Miami, what were you doing? I was working in what I normally work in my profession. Okay. And what does that mean? Human resources. I'm sorry? Human resources. Okay. But at the bar, you would have come into contact with a lot of folks, right? Yes, sir. And so the only time you ever saw these people at any point in your life was for one hour or thereabouts on October 21st of 2010, right? Yes, sir. How long did it take you to make an identification of them? A few minutes. A few minutes? Not, I mean, within a half an hour. Well, within a half an hour. I'm I was long. working when I received the email. Okay. Let's make sure we're asking the right question. When you got the pictures, yes, sir. did you recognize them immediately? I recognized, yes, both of them. Okay. And, but again, they were, you were sent two pictures of two people, right? Two people. And in fact, Mr. Rosenthal, when he communicated to you, to you said he was going to send you pictures of the two people. Yes, sir. Okay. Taking a look at the, may I approach you? You right. Looking at defense exhibit number two, when he communicated with you, just read that portion right there. Your Honor, I'm going to object. It's not been tended or admitted. Well, I'm assuming, Ms. Cloud, you're saying read it to herself at this time? I'm going to ask him to read it to herself. That's right. I would allow her to do that yes, at this sir. time. Read it to yourself, young lady. And then when you finish reading, look up. Okay. Okay. Have you, does that refresh your memory 
as to any communication Mr. Rosenthal had with you? Yes, sir. Did Mr. Rosenthal tell you that attached are the two people who walked into your bar on October 21st? When he followed up with his email. Okay. Did he tell you the pictures I'm sending you are, in fact, the two people who walked into your bar? Yes, sir. He did, right? Yes. And that's when you made your quote-unquote identification, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, do you know where the, is it the Hampton Inn is? In Greenville? Yeah. Um, no, sir. Okay, you have no idea how far that would be from the, the lounge where you worked, right? The hotel in downtown was not far away, the okay. hotels. Um, the hotel downtown, um, how far, when you say not far away, what do you mean that? In driving distance, it was not that far, less than two minutes. In walking distance, it was a little bit further. Okay. Did you ever see either one of them get into a car? No. You did watch them as they walked out, right? Yes, sir. Um, Do you recall testifying in the previous trial regarding seeing them as they walked out of the establishment? Yes, sir. Okay. Let me mark this as defendant's exhibit number three. Now, we'll show it to Mr. James. Again, I'm going to ask for her to refresh her recollection. May I approach? You may. All right, Ms. Oliveira, I am going to approach and show you what has been marked as defendant's exhibit number three and ask you to direct your attention to um, the bottom of page 71. Just read that over again to yourself. you testify, does that refresh your memory as to what you testified to in the previous trial about their walking out? Yes, sir. Did you testify that you saw them, I guess, let me take a look at it, I forgot. That you saw them, he kissed her on the way out, and that was the last time I saw them. Yes, sir. You have testified here today extensively as to seeing them after they left the bar, right? After they left the bar? Yes, as they were walking away outside, outside of the physical premises of the building, correct? Yes, sir. My statement doesn't change that they left embraced. Okay, so at the time of Mr. Newman's trial, you said he kissed her on the way out, and that's the last I saw of them, right? Yes, and they had their arms around each other. And now you testify here today that you saw them embrace once they were outside of the bar. It's the same thing. Yes or no? Can you please restate your question? I, I'm not really sure. I'm just asking you, did you testify in Mr. Newman's trial mm -hmm. that he kissed her on the way out? And on that's the, the way out, as I'm saw. looking out of the window, is what I testified, or I recall testifying to, that I looked out the window. That's okay. so what I saw. So your definition of the term way out is when they're already outside? On their way out of the door, yes, sir. Okay, so it's their way out of the door as opposed to their way out of the restaurant, right? It was right there. Okay. Um, anything else in regard to her being upset? No, sir. Okay. Um, were you aware on November 18th of 2010 that Hemi Newman, well, that Rusty Snyderman was killed? Um, I don't really remember what Mr. Rosenthal had indicated to me. Okay, I mean, I'm not asking you what I don't, I don't, no, you. no, I don't recall. Okay, on, on the day itself? On the day itself, no, I don't. Okay, were you aware of Hemi Newman's arrest on January 4th of 2011? No, sir. At the time Mr. Rosenthal communicated to you, uh, were you aware that Hemi Newman had been arrested for the murder of Rusty Snyder? I don't remember that. So there would have never been an opportunity between... Oh, by the way, what was the, the looking at the uh, email, does that refresh your memory as to the date that you would have had communication with Mr. Uh, Rosenthal? Does the date here? 
does that refer, and again, looking at the, uh, actually, yeah, you can take a look at both of those pages. Does that refresh your memory as to those dates, ma'am? Yes, sir. And what would those dates have been? The Monday? Hmm? March 7th? March 7th, 2011, right? Sir. Over four months, four and a half months, after these two folks came into your bar for about an hour and then left, right? Yes, sir. Apparently he wasn't much of a dancer, is that correct? That is correct. Um, she was dancing and he was doing his darndest, but all he could do was throw her around, right? That's correct. Okay. But nonetheless, they apparently then got into some sort of more involved dance, is your recollection? Yes. Even though he couldn't dance, right? He tried. Okay. Um, and again, um, do you remember, and if you don't, that's fine, whether they were drinking the same sort of drink or not? I don't. Okay. And uh, do you remember, again, I don't think, I think you've answered this, but I apologize, whether one had two drinks, one had one drink, I don't vice remember. versa? No, sir. Okay, but they did not appear to be intoxicated at that time, no. correct? No. Good I don't believe I have any other questions, Ms. Olivera. Thanks very much. Thank you. Any redirect? Yes, Your Honor. You may. <coughs> Oliveira, is, is there any reason why you would remember these folks? I mean, was there something different or odd about them? They, they were just an odd couple. <laughs> it's one of those that you see them and you're asking yourself, oh, that's odd, that's strange. Um, there was really... I mean, what was so odd or strange about these Their folks? entire stay at the bar, the, the entire time that they were there, it was just odd. When you, do you remember your 16th birthday party? I do. Okay. Can you tell us about it? Just in brief. Um, yeah, I, I went <laughs> for some pictures and got picked up in a limo and went out with some friends. Okay. Of all the birthday parties that you've had, do you remember pretty much most of them? No. Well, I'm going to object to the I'm, relevance I'm, of I'm, brother this I'm going witness. somewhere with my next question. All right, I'm going right. I'm going to give you a little bit of latitude as far as that you're going to connect this up. Next uh, question. All right. I am ejecting on the grounds of rolling. Well, I understand, and I'm going to, uh, for right now, withhold that ruling. I'm going to give you some latitude. Go ahead. Do you remember the days of the week that those birthday parties were on? No, sir. <laughs> okay. Um, you said that you were talking to, to the lady, the defendant here, yes. and... Can you tell us again, what did she tell you about, about her dancing ability? He had indicated, the gentleman had indicated that she was a trained dancer. And, and she, was, that a, she was a trained dancer? A trained dancer. And what did she say? Yes. She said yes? Yes. She said she was a trained dancer? Yes. She confirmed his statement. Okay. <clears throat> Nothing further at this time, you Mr. Clegg, any recross? Yes, sir. The trained dancer stuff, uh, was that in your communications with Mr. Rosenthal? I believe so. It was? Well, take a look and... Uh, I don't know if it was in the email, but I know that I indicated that on the phone. Okay. Did you testify about that when you testified in the trial at any number? I believe so. That's not in the case here. It's not in the emails with Mr. Rosenthal, but you have to give me an answer. Yes or no, did you testify about it in the trial of Henry? I believe so, yes. Okay, well, here's your testimony. Why don't you find that for me?
It's not here, sir. Thank you very much, ma'am. I have nothing further. Mm -hmm. Better re redirect. Yes, Your Honor. Just one quick question. Um, were you asked that at the no, trial coming over? No, I was not. So you never said anything differently? No, I've always said that that was what he indicated. I don't remember. I don't remember if that question was posed, but I do remember Mr. Newman stating that and Ms. the defendant confirming that she was a trained dancer. Have have myself or anybody that worked in my office told you that she was a trained dancer? No, sir. Is there anything in that email communication that Mr. Clegg was waving around that said she was a trained dancer? In my emails, no. I know when I spoke with someone from your office, I went into further detail. It was very hard to describe how two people are acting, especially given, you know, the, their body language. I, I'm, it was very difficult. So I know I've said that they... Mr. Newman indicated that she was a trained dancer. Thank you. Your Honor, uh, no further questions. Is permission to publish this letter? Oh, yes. Yes, you may. Is this one Mr. Um, James has been identified in that earlier package? Yes, it has. What number is it? Okay. Number is it? Just for the purpose of 6-1, Your Honor. 6-1. Okay. Yes, sir. Did you, did you dance? Um, I got onto the dance floor myself, as I explained. Um, I've been a trained dancer for some time. Going to be able to dance freely is like a release. I'm very much in my own space. Nothing for you, Any re-recross? Uh, probably not, Judge. Hold on a second. All right, take your time. Thank you, Judge. Oh, we're back on the record. Lawyers, may this witness be released and excused, or do you want her to remain on the subpoena? Your Honor, I have no objection to her being released. Any objection? I have no objection whatsoever, Your Honor. All right. You can come on down, young lady. You're free to go. Thank uh, you. If you're going back to Miami, have a safe trip. <laughs> All right. Take care. Call your next witness. Your Honor, the state at this time intends to play one more clip before calling the next witness. The clip is identified as 2-1. 2-1. You may. Okay. On July 17th, do you remember the defendant sending you an email concerning Ruby Falls? I do not have that recollection. I don't... What's Ruby Falls? Okay. Um, and judge my approach? You may. This is stipulation page 4861 and 4862. I'm going to hand you state's exhibit number 9. Can you identify that for me, please? I'm sorry, uh, read the whole email? Is that what you meant? Can you just identify it? Is that your email address, the defendant's email address? Um, uh, it is my email address, and it is his email address. Okay. Do you remember? Take a second look at State's Exhibit 9. Do you remember that? Uh... I, I don't, but I'm sure that now that I read it... Uh, I mean, that is your email address. It's my email address. Okay. Do you need to look at that document and refresh your recollection? You may. Uh, 
Uh-huh. Follow me on that email. From Hemi Newman in the middle, it says, it's a waterfall in a cave. Right. Yes, and wishing you were there. Yeah. How did you respond? Uh, he says, it's a waterfall in a cave. Yes, wishing we were there. I wish I could. And then he says, what hotel are you in? Look there up and, and ask, see how you responded. I says, ditto. I honestly don't remember the hotel. I will have to check tomorrow. A Hilton property. We're talking about a hotel that we were staying in, I guess, for one of the trips. I understand. He's there with his family at Ruby Falls, wishing you were there. And you responded, ditto. Why would you respond, ditto? I, uh... I don't know if that's the part of the email I was responding to, and I I think I was, I can only say that I might have been responding to the fact that he talked about tranquility in a nice place that was peaceful, because he does say that, and I hope for peace in my life, and, you know, my life was pretty, has been, you know, pretty busy when I was working there, so I'm sure that that's what I was thinking when I was responding. Okay. Judge, I move to admit nine. It's already stipulated too, sir. When you traveled for GE without the defendant, did he ever show up even though he did not have GE business at that location? Yes. Uh, well... I know now that he didn't have GE business, but that was not my understanding at the time. Which trip are you talking about? No, at this time the state was called Katie Goff and have a return to You might. Although the humming may persist, I just need you to listen as best as you can, and I have been working on it during the lunch break. I will have them working on it tonight, but there's some interference that I just can't control right now. Kathleen Goff, K-A-T-H-L-E-E-N, G-O-U-G-H. All right, Ms. Goff, you were with us not too long ago, and we discussed email at that time. I'm going to direct your attention to what has been marked as state exhibit number 14 on it. I'll use okay. you to publish that and read it to the jury. Okay, um, this is an email from Andrea Snyderman to um, Emmy Newman on Saturday, July the 17th. Let me tell you, how does it, how does it begin? Who's the first communicator? The, the original message is from Hemi Newman to Andrea Snyderman um, on Saturday the 17th um, at approximately 16.43, which, 4.43?
Uh, this is a, a series of emails. You may proceed. As, uh, as I said, that humming noise is persisting. When I try to turn the amplifier or reset it, it's coming in louder. But uh, we're going to have to continue. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can hear, I just have the witnesses speak up as loud as I possibly can as far as what is else being taken. I can't control the sound system right now, so um, but as long as you can hear, that's about the best I can do. Go ahead. The document, Safe Exhibit Number 15, uh, that I just handed you, how many mm -hmm. pages does that consist of? Um, I have two and a half pages. Two and a half pages, that's state stamp page for the record, 6376, 6377, and 6375, is that correct? Uh, 6, 7, and 8. 6, 7, 8, thank you. 6376, 6377, and 6378. I'm going to direct your attention, Your Honor, may I You may. Thank you. I'm going to direct your attention, Ms. Goff, to a portion of the email on the second page of the document. And I am referencing, uh, can you tell me what the time stamp and the date are for the email um, that I just referenced and I just identified for you? Saturday, July the 17th at 1929.07, which is U.S. military time. For, it is military yep. time. Um, can you tell me who sent that email? Uh, Hemi Newman uh, sent the email to Andrea Snyderman. And can you read the content of the email, please? Um, it's a... It, it's a waterfall in a cave, yes, and wishing you were here, and wishing I shared that the tranquility with you. <laughs> what Does it appear to be a typo in the email? Not quite sure what that is. It oh, probably looks like a typo. That's, um, what it, that's how it reads. Look in the yeah. line of the email. Um, what hotel are you in? And what was the date of that again? That is uh, Saturday, the, July the 17th, Saturday, 2010. July 17th. Does Mrs. Snyderman respond? Uh, she does. Um, what uh, defendant Snyderman's response? Ditto. I honestly do not remember the hotel. I will have to check tomorrow. A Hilton property, I'm sure. Ditto. That was the response? Ditto. Period. Go back to Mr. Newman's previous email. Yep. Did you say something like, wishing you were here? What was his exact words? Um, and wishing you were here and wishing I shared. Yeah. Was the, um, did Mr. Newman then respond to Mrs. Snyderman's email? He did. And what was that response? Can you read it for us, please? Uh, is it the Hampton, uh, only Hilton near the facility? I stayed at the Holiday Inn. Okay. Thank you. You know, at this time, I'm going to ask that the uh, clip identified as 2 2 be played. You may. When did you go to Longmont? I, I don't remember the date. In July. Okay. July of 2010? Yes. When you were in Longmont, did the defendant attempt to have flowers and chocolates and a love note waiting for you in Longmont? Uh, I was not aware of that until it came out in the uh, proceedings here so far. I was not aware of that. Approach, Judge. You may. This is stipulation page 4875. My handy with the state's exhibit number 10. Can you identify this for me, please? Uh, okay. What does that say? Um... He talks about uh, flowers and, or talks about chocolates and flowers that they were supposed to leave in my room. I, I don't remember receiving this email. I, Do you remember your response on the very bottom? No. You don't remember responding? I, so thoughtful and sweet, I knew you might try something like this? 
I don't remember responding that, no. Your Honor, state moves to admit 10, it's stipulated to. All right, then the note without objection. Now, on 10, is that your email address? It's my email address. And is that the defendant's email address? It is. Ma'am? It, yes. Thank you. While you were in Longmont, did the defendant send you roses in an email? I don't know. Judge, this is Exhibit 11, and it's S4867 through 69. And that's through the stipulated evidence? Yes, sir. Uh, Ma'am, this is States 11. Can you identify that for me, please? <coughs> yep. Is that your email? It's my email address. And is that the defendant's email? It is. And did you not respond saying, those are gorgeous, seriously? And I have an appreciation for perfectly open roses. Not sure what else to say, but thank you. Unbelievably thoughtful of you. Is that yeah. your response? That's, I guess, my response, yeah. And you don't remember receiving that email or sending that email either? I, these, this is now almost two years ago, so, uh, but if you have it here, then I suppose that I sent it. Judge, I move to admit states 11. It's also admitted. All right. Your Honor, first witness. You may. For reference, the reference of the record is the state's stance is 3828 to identify the state's exhibit number 16. Does that consider with the state's exhibit number 16? What is it? Uh, it is um, an email um, from Andrea to Hemi responding to an email that he had sent her. Now, we talk about Andrea, you're talking about the defendant, Andrea Feynman? Correct. When we talk about Hemi, are you talking about um, Hemi Newman? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you read that email for me, please? The response or the original? The original. The original from uh, Mr. Newman? Yes. Um, it has a URL at the top of sendflowers to hyderabad.com. Um, let me stop you. What's a URL? Um, a web address, website. You click that link, what happens? Uh, it looks to me like it's going to bring up a picture of mixed roses. Okay. Um, I tried to get this delivered tonight to your room, but ran into Hilton bureaucracy. How frustrating. Uh, like 20 phone calls. You are really special. Good night. Talk to you tomorrow. What time is that email sent? July the 18th at 9.43 p.m. At 9.43 p.m.? Does the respond to the uh, email sending her a picture of um, a roses? She does. When does she respond? At 12.30 a.m. on Monday the 19th. And what is her response? As so, indicated in the state exhibit number 16. So thoughtful and sweet. I knew you might try something like this. Uh, talk to you tomorrow. I am joining a Mumbai quad opening call now. Sleep later. Is there any other response? Is there any other um, email communication on state exhibit number 16? No, there's not. Uh, you may. I'm showing you what has been marked as state exhibit number 17, and for purposes of the record, is state stamp page 6381. What is state exhibit number 17, Ms. Uh, it is another email between uh, Ms. Snyderman and Mr. Newman. And what is the date and time of the um, of Ms. Newman's or I'm sorry, Mr. Newman's initial email? Uh, Mr. Newman's initial email was 9:49 p.m. On what date? On Sunday, July the 18th. And when, if she does, does the defendant respond to Mr. Newman's email of Sunday, July 18th? At 12.27 a.m. on July the 19th. And what is her response? Uh, those are gorgeous, seriously. I have an appreciation for perfectly open roses. Not sure what else to say, but thank you. Uh, many thoughts, I suppose. Unbelievably thoughtful of you. Unbelievably thoughtful of you? Yes. Uh, 
Now this continues to be a huge effort. The amount of emails that are stipulated to Mr. Geary, as far as I'm concerned, doesn't have to move to admit it. We can stipulate that they're admitted, just to say, can have him say that each time. All right. I appreciate you giving that offer. Follow my description. All right. I will see. I will, sir. All right. <laughs> And did you make a further response to that email? I don't. Ma'am? I don't know. You don't remember? No, I don't remember the email, every email that I, that I wrote. I'm sorry, I didn't hear your last response, ma'am. I don't remember every email that I've written. And may I approach Judge? You may. Judge, this is number 12. It's S4878. Thank you. Ma'am, I'll show you what's been marked state's exhibit number 12. Can you identify that for me, please? Is that your email? Uh, yes. Is that the defendant's email? Yes. And you're sitting, you respond again, are you kidding me? Nothing here, of course. And then you respond or he responds that the receptionist called him the last great romantic. Okay. And how did, how did you respond on that email? You can read it out loud uh, if you can. At the top? Yes, ma'am. He's asking you how did you respond, so if you see your response in there, read it out loud. It's clear. But I thought it maybe did not work out romantic for sure. Talk to you in a few. Why would you say to him it was romantic? I said romantic for sure, romantic gesture. It was a response to what he was saying. That's, I was responding to what he was saying, I guess. Why would you respond that it was a romantic gesture to the defendant? Uh, he says the receptionist called me the last great romantic. But he just sent you an email with roses. Yeah, well, I just really didn't think it was a very big deal. At that time, and the email is dated July 19th, and you were in Longmont at that time. Yep. Were you and the defendant romantically involved? No. But you still use the word romantic. He used the word romantic. No, ma'am. And I responded with the same verbiage that he used. You stated romantic for sure. Okay, I used the word romantic, sure. In response to him using the word romantic. Now, you made a distinction a moment ago. Did the defendant have GE business at Longmont, to your knowledge? Uh, I presumed that he did. That's what I was told. Okay. Did the defendant show up at Longmont when you were there? Yes. Did you pick the defendant up at the airport? Yes. Did you take him back to Longmont with you? Yes. Did you email the defendant back and forth and arrange even to sit next to him on the plane on the flight back? Oh, I'm, I'm sure I did that, because we did that all the time. That was a focused two-hour opportunity to talk about work for me that I don't really get the rest of the time and during the week. So that would be normal course of business? Yes. You're right. I'm approaching you with what has been marked as State's Exhibit 20, and for the purposes of the record, it is State Stamp Page 6387. I may remind close to the witness, I'm going to direct your attention. What does State's Exhibit number 20 appear to be? Uh, it's a, another uh, thread of emails between um, Mr. Newman and Ms. Snyderman. I'm going to direct your attention. How many pages is State's Exhibit number 20? Uh, two. I'm going to direct your attention to the um, 
bottom of the first page. And what am I indicating? Do you see? Uh, it is an email from Mr. Newman to Ms. Snyderman. And what date is that email from Mr. Newman to the defendant? Uh, Monday, July the 19th at 12.40 a.m. Okay, can you read the content of that email, please? Um, can I call you at your, looks like 11, when I'm on my way? I don't know what that is. <laughs> call you at 11? Um, yeah. What does... No, I'm going to get to that. Anything? That's not what it says. It says, can I call you at your 11? And Ms. Carlos just said, can I call you at 11? The witness just said, yes. And the document speaks for itself. And I do object to the state editing it in an effort to get the witness to agree that their editing is a correct reading. All right, Ms. Petrie. I note it. I will direct that the jury read whatever is on the screen that may or may not be in that particular email and listen to what the witness is saying and I will direct the lawyer to quote, not read the witness at this stage since she was on the record. Thank you, Your Honor. Can you read for me the exact wording of Mr. Newman's email to Ms. Uh, Snyderman on the email we've been requesting of July 19th? Yes. Can I call you at your 11 uh, when I'm on my way? And what, if anything, does the defendant respond? Um, the response is, yes, you can call at 11. I'll be off the quad call. I did not get the note, as I said. Not sure what email it was supposed to come in. What, if anything, does Mr. Newman then respond to the defendant? His response is, it was supposed to be um, a paper they were supposed to leave in your room uh, with chocolate, chocolates and flowers. What time is that email sent from Mr. Newman to Ms. At 12.45 a.m. on July the 19th. What, if anything, does the defendant respond? The response is, are you kidding me? Nothing here, of course. Anyway, are you kidding me? Is there any further email communication on State's Exhibit number 20? Yes. Um, Mr. Newman responds, no, very serious. That was the 20 phone calls I referred to. Uh, the receptionist called me, uh, the last great romantic. I'll tell you what the note was supposed to say before we hang up later. And what, if anything, does the defendant respond? Uh, the, respon the response is, but I thought it maybe did not work out. Romantic for sure. Talk to you in a few. Read me the defendant's exact words, please. I don't want to misquote it on the calendar. What does she respond in the last response? But I thought it maybe did not work out. Romantic for sure. Talk to you in a few. What time was that email sent? At 12.53 a.m. On what day? On Monday, July the 19th. Is there any further email communication between the two, Defendant Snyderman and Hemi Newman, as requested on State Exhibit number 20? No. Thank you. Your Honor, at this time, the State will move to introduce and publish for the jury an additional clip identified as 2-3. 2-3, you may. Thank you. But do you remember telling us the defendant was never at Longmont? I don't remember saying that. I remember he did not go to Longmont with me, and he was not in that training with me. That's all true. Okay. Yeah. But by your memory now, he was there? Yes, he was there. Okay. Now, did you indicate that he was there on business, or was he there just to see you? He indicated to me he was there on business. When you had business, or the general practice of GE, if the defendant was there on business, would he be able to have transportation or a car? Uh, I suppose. Why would he need you to pick him up at the airport? Don't know. Just asked me to do it, so that's what you do when your boss asks you to do it. When he got back home, did you have to give him a ride? Yep. Why? Didn't have a car. I just, just these things just didn't. I, I don't know what to tell you. I'm a nice person. Ms. Scott, I'm handing you what has been marked as state's exhibit number 21. And for purposes of the record, it is state stamp page 6394. Your Honor, you may. Exhibit number 21, what is that? Uh, it is a email conversation between Mr. Newman and Ms. Snyderman. 
And can you read the first communication? Thank you. Can you read the first communication and let the jurors know what the date and time of that first email communication on State's Exhibit Number 21 is? Uh, it's Monday, July the 19th at 5:54, um, and there's simply a subject line of "How are you getting back from the airport?" Who sent that email? Mr. Newman. Who received that email? Ms. Snyderman. Did uh, the defendant respond to that email? She did. Um, you mean on Friday night in ATL? Um, I actually had not gotten that far. My family may already uh, be at the lake, so I would probably take a taxi home to Dunwoody, then leave the next morning to meet them out there. What are you doing? Obviously, I did not leave a car at the airport. What, if anything, does Mr. Newman respond to the defendant's communication? Um, Mr. Newman responds, send a note to Carmen and ask her to order car service for you. Then we'll figure out how I get home since I'm not on business travel. What's the date of that last email? July the 19th. And what's the time it was sent? 6.14 p.m. Can you read for me the exact wording of Mr. Newman's uh, last line? I want to show you right. Um, then we'll figure out how I get home since I am not on business travel. Does the defendant respond? Uh, she does. How does the defendant respond? Uh, I can help there, I'm sure. Your Honor, with the court's permission, we'd like to play an additional clip identified as clip 2-4. 2-4, you may. Thank you. And you, to the best of your knowledge now, you're saying that he was there on business. <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, one second, Judge. Was this a, how many days was this training, ma'am? A week. One week? Mm-hmm. All right. May I approach the witness? You may. Judge, this is Exhibit 107. 107? Yes, sir. It's stipulation number 4891. Can you hear Yes, sir. Can you identify that from the place? Mm-hmm. Is that yes, you can identify? Yes, I can. Uh, Go ahead. She said yes, you can identify it. Okay. Is that an email to you from the defendant? Uh-huh. Um, well, it's a couple of emails back and forth, but yeah. In that email, doesn't he say? How are you getting back from the airport? I give this whole you know, Friday night. I haven't gotten. I hadn't gotten that far. Family may already be at the lake, so I'll probably take the taxi home. But then to Dunwoody, then leave the next morning, meet out there. What are you doing? Obviously, I did not leave a car at the airport. And then we got a car service to my home, and I drove him. Yeah, how about reading the rest of it? Send a note to Carmen. Ask her to order car service for you, then we'll figure out how I get home since I'm not on business travel. Since I'm not on business travel. Yeah. So he was not in Longmont on business travel. And then I said I can help there, I'm sure. So he was not on GE business for Longmont. That's what that says. So why was he at Longmont? I don't know. I, well, now I know. Was he there to see you? I guess so. To stalk me? Probably. Did he stalk you from inside your own room? Stalking can take on many different meanings. So that's a yes. He was there to spend time with me. In your room. In your room. Yeah, he did not share a room with me. Was he in my room? Might have been for a little while, but didn't share a room with me. And your honor, I have one final clip that's identified as uh, clip 2-5. 2-5, you may. Thank you, your honor. The next trip you took, and we talked about this yesterday, is the trip to uh, Longmont, Colorado. Correct. And when we say Denver, Longmont, that's essentially the same area, correct? That's one trip. I wasn't in Denver, I was in Longmont. I understand that. Do you have to fly into Denver to get to Longmont? Yes. Okay, so you were in Denver. I flew into Denver. Okay. So when you, yesterday, you were talking to Mr. Geary about not telling the police about Denver or anything. We're talking about that same trip. There's not two trips to Colorado. Correct. Okay. Snyderman, we talked yesterday, you talked yesterday. I'm sorry, can I be called Mrs. Snyderman, or is that not against, that against the court rules? All right. Thank you. Yeah, I'm happy to call whatever she wants, that's fine. All right. Uh, I, I was saying Miss. She prefers Mrs. Snyderman. I will. Courtesy if you would, counsel. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mrs. Snyderman, and I meant no disrespect by that. Let's ask questions. 
Of course, you knew, as you discussed yesterday, that Mr. Newman was coming out to meet you in Longmont, Colorado. He was coming out to Longmont, Colorado. Well, do you still, as you sit here today, uh, are you, is it still your testimony that you thought he was there on business? Uh, I really didn't care or know why he was there specifically. I know now why he was there, but that's only because of what everyone has been talking about. Well, you knew that he was coming out to Longmont, Colorado, correct? That's correct. And Thank you, and I have no further questions. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you a break at this point in time before we go into cross-examination. Uh, Deputy Buckles will assist now. You're going to have to move that board so the jurors can walk through Deputy Buckles. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be about a 10-minute break, and this is uh, going to be our last break for the afternoon, okay? All right. Let me see. And good afternoon, everyone. I love the lives. Coverage of the Andrea Snyderman trial continues. I'm Jeff Hullinger along with attorney Paige Pate. Paige, it is interesting to take note of what feels like a trial within a trial, looking at these DVDs from the Hemi Newman murder trial earlier this year, now played before this jury and these attorneys and this judge in this courtroom, really gives it a, an, an unusual feel. It's almost surreal. Right. It is a trial within a trial. I mean, we're trying the Hemi Newman case all over again, except Andrea Snyderman this time is actually a defendant. You know, but I understand why they're doing this. I mean, they could try to introduce her prior statements just by the cold written transcript, but this is very effective. You actually get to hear what she said and you get to see what she looked like back then. As we were discussing before, it's a totally different look for her and not nearly as appealing to the jury. It, it is interesting to take note of what is seen and unseen for that matter. This physical appearance is significantly different here in August than it was earlier in the year and that sort of, uh, sort of demeanor of hers in answering questions which at times is robust and combative yes and, to and describe a, it politely absolutely and a bit snippy the whole call me mrs uh, snyderman the state did not have to play that portion of the